Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And take a look at this set. You may think we've lost weight, but that's not the case. We're in chairs twice the size and far more comfortable than before. So we're considering extending this program another 30 minutes today. No, we won't do that, but it's good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. And I'm pleased today to introduce a new face to county government. As you know, there's been a lot of discussion about our health care centers. Over the last six, seven years, we've transitioned from three facilities to one. And very recently, in fact, on August 29th, we hired a brand new administrator for Rocky Knoll. And I am very pleased to introduce Michael Tobenheim. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Sure, my pleasure. Mike's been with us now almost a full three weeks and certainly has jumped right in, hit the ground running. And Mike, please start by sharing a little bit about your background and letting our viewers know a little bit about yourself. Be delighted to. Uh, I've been in the healthcare industry for just shy of 30 years now. Um, worked my way up in the industry like, like most of the guys who uh, uh, I've started with. Uh, I started in the maintenance field uh, years ago. Then you know, completed uh, my coursework and tested and became an administrator over time. Um, and then an area manager, regional manager, all the way up into a corporate director position for uh, uh, a major uh, healthcare company uh, where I spent uh, probably the bulk of my career, about 15 years. Now, um, one of the reasons we hired you was an outstanding track record of going into facilities and making improvements and really a real financial focus. But uh, I also want our viewers to appreciate that you're no stranger to Sheboygan. Actually not. Uh, I was born and raised in Sheboygan. Uh, uh, actually by the old, for, for the older folks, the old Lickie's store uh, in uh, Sheboygan. Uh, I uh, was born and raised uh, in that area around Main Street. Uh, and then my uh, uh, my parents uh, built a new home back in 1963 on what was the very edge of town back then, uh, 26th Street, which uh, now seems to be the middle of town. Um, so uh, I spent uh, my years, early years here, graduated from North High, and then started my trek across the country. Well, good to have you come back home. Thanks. It's great to be back. So as I said, three weeks on the job. Uh, it's, you're just getting a lay of the land. What, what are your initial impressions of Rocky Knoll and the people you're working with? Um, very pleased. Not surprised, I guess, um, because I remembered the way Sheboygan Oss was in my mind. You had a mindset of the hardworking, dedicated, you know, uh, friendly uh, folks uh, that I had come to know as a, as a young guy. Uh, and um, that's what I'm finding again here. Um, the facility, the physical plant, the, the skill of our labor force uh, at the center, uh, and just uh, the attitude uh, uh, all says that uh, there's no reason we can't be successful in going forward. Again, I know it's been a short tenure, and certainly some of our viewers have, have heard us talk about this on this program before, but please give just a little background as to what's transpired of late. Sunny Ridge has been sold to a private operator, and there's been some transition period. Uh, set the stage for us. Sure. Um, uh, most of that had all transpired uh, just before I came on board, but um, uh, a fair amount of our workforce that is currently at Rocky Knoll uh, has come from the other two centers that uh, the county used to operate, both uh, Comp and uh, Sunny Ridge. Um, we have melded that workforce together and uh, they are beginning to form their own family now that uh, is centered around Rocky Knoll. Um, obviously there is uh, some trepidation you know, on the amount of uh, staff and residents alike as to what might happen in the long run in that, but uh, overall uh, everybody's settling in and uh, things are really beginning to move forward. Um, you know, Rocky Knoll has uh, taken off on its operation as a you know, privately held company now, and um, I understand is doing fairly well. Um, so Sunny Ridge, rather. Sunny Ridge, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, <laughs> That's a good segue into my next question, <laughs> because as you can appreciate, uh, after consolidating from three to two, and, and we put a, nearly a $10 million addition on it, Rocky Knoll, about 
five, six years ago, and, and then the sale of Sunny Ridge to a private mm -hmm. operator, which, as you said, is really working well. Mm -hmm. It's really working well, and we're, very, we're collectively all pleased about that. Mm -hmm. And there are our staff at Rocky Knoll, for good reason, anxious. Well, what's going to happen to Rocky Knoll? And there's new administrators going to be coming into place. And, and uh, certainly we've had discussions about this, but for the benefit of for our viewers, What's your take? What's the message been? What have you been communicating to staff about the future of Rocky Knoll? Well, as you recall, part of our conversation in my decision-making process to, to join um, your efforts here at Sheboygan County has been you know, what was the county's bottom line? Where did they want to, to be and where did they want to go? And uh, you had, both of you gentlemen have uh, reinforced me on numerous occasions, um, your dedication to trying to maintain a county-operated center to service the uh, residents of Sheboygan County. Um, and quite honestly, it was that dedication to that cause uh, which was uh, one of the primary reasons I, I wanted to join uh, and come on board um, because it was clear that you were dedicated to it. Um, and uh, I did not want to be a part of, you know, a quick turnaround to sell or close or anything like that. I've I had the opportunities to do that many times in my career uh, uh, in the private sector, uh, and I know how traumatic it is, but uh, that's not what I wanted to do uh, with my career now. And uh, so I've been clearly communicating to, to the staff and, and the residents there. That's basically been the number one question. Yeah, you know, what's going to happen to us? Are we going to, you know, uh, are they planning to close us? And after I've been able to convince them that no, that is not the direction they want to go, then the next question is, you know, can, well, can we make it? Yeah. Right. Chairman Gehring and I both, you know, were involved with the interview process. We had some very good candidates, and, and you were the shining star. And, and I appreciate how you summarized that because uh, I, I don't want anyone watching this program or anyone in this community having any, any doubt that it's our, we're doing everything we can to maintain Rocky Knoll as an effective healthcare center facility. And in my opinion, it's the shining star in this community because we have a very experienced workforce, we have a beautiful facility, and I think we have excellent staff in place to provide that quality care. So. I'm as optimistic as I've been in some time about the future, and again, so pleased to have you on board, Mike, with your background and experience. And getting to that background and experience, what are some of the steps you intend to take to help Rocky Knoll be more competitive to, to essentially stop the pressure that's occurring on the property taxpayer to mm -hmm. hold that line and, in fact, start to reduce the pressure on, on folks paying property taxes? Um, Actually, uh, one of the first things that, that I'm doing is one of the things that I've outlined uh, uh, with you gentlemen when I was talking to you initially, and that is to seize the opportunity to generate revenues that that center has. Um, the revenue potential in that center has you know, just not been realized, and uh, there's uh, significant opportunities, both in um, improving the census uh, and the overall number of uh, residents that uh, we care for on a daily basis, but also maximizing the reimbursement that is out there already uh, on the residents that we currently have in place uh, through educating and working with the staff that is there um, to help provide the necessary data and information so that we can bill appropriately and, and be uh, reimbursed the way other centers in the private sector um, are. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it, as I've, you've heard me mention a couple of times to us, our management team, I enjoyed during our interview where you mentioned had you, when you were working for the private sector, you used to eat county or government run <laughs> facilities for lunch and you were alluding to the marketing. What, what did you mean by that? Well, basically the, um, uh, the mindset of the county centers is typically one of maintenance. Um, and the mindset in the private sector is of growth. Um, so you're always looking for new avenues, you're always looking at new directions, providing new services, and creating new markets and not waiting for them to be created. Um, working with the acute uh, healthcare delivery system, your hospitals, in developing um, either new transitional care um, and ancillary support mechanisms for that hospital, 
or uh, for the community as a whole. So it's, uh, it's more of mindset than, than anything else, but then you act on it and create your market. So you anticipate being far more effective or proactive in marketing in, in those areas. Um, yeah, there's a lot of our competition here in the city that I would like uh, to um, be taken off of the Christmas card list as we're going forward. <laughs> uh, final question before I turn it over to Bill. Sure. When do you anticipate people or the community as a whole starting to see some of these changes take effect? I think if you were to visit the center today already, uh, not that I've done anything dramatically other than um, working with the department heads and working with the, the staff that I've come into contact so far, convincing them that there is opportunity, there is the chance to be successful, and we're going to seize on it and move forward. I think you'll see a slight, uh, a, a slight improvement in, in the morale and, uh, and the focus, but I think you're also going to see uh, people looking at the operation of the center uh, as a business as well and not just purely a, uh, an organization um, that is just there and being supported. I think you're looking at them, um, looking at it in ways to um, generate new opportunities for the center. Um, admissions have uh, significantly picked up already. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Mike, as you know, the county invested a significant amount of dollars in the last couple of years in Rocky Knoll, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we did was built Woodland Village, which mm -hmm. used to be the ICFMR. Yes. What is that beautiful facility being used for at this point in time? Well, today that is going to be, uh, and in the future, that is going to be the crown jewel of Rocky Knoll. That particular um, building, while not intentionally designed originally, for the purpose that we're going to be utilizing it uh, for is actually perfectly designed for the purpose that we're going to be uh, using it. And that is to build a, um, a strong rehabilitation and transitional care uh, center the, with the private rooms, private baths, TV, telephone, uh, set up in a pod concept where the staffing is consolidated with smaller groups of room so you have more one-to-one -one service. That would allow us to take more acutely uh, ill individuals, uh, Medicare residents, um, for shorter periods of time, exposing them to an intensive rehab and rehabilitation program and getting them back into their homes or, or the community settings they came from. So um, uh, the, the center is really uh, the envy of even the private sector. That is what they would love to see their centers having, and in a lot of cases don't have the money or, or the opportunity to expand and build it. So it's, it fits perfectly into the plan moving forward. Okay. That kind of leads into my next question. How does Rocky Knoll in general compare to some of the facilities you work with across the nation? Um, Across the nation, uh, you know, as as an entity, uh, as a facility, the physical plant, the people, uh, and that it's right near the top. I mean, it really is. Um, it has the material resources um, over the years of it been utilized wisely and put together in in a thoughtful plan, where um, uh, you have today just an outstanding uh, physical plant and center. Um, Anything dates a little bit as you move forward, so you know you kind of keep updating it. But the basic is there. The um, uh, the f uh, staff uh, with the tenure, I, I've never experienced it before. Um, maybe a small little 60-bed center in the south somewhere, but short of that, you don't have that kind of tenure and experience in a workforce, which means they know their job, they know what to do, they know how to do it, and they're there for a reason, and that's because they care. So, um, yeah, short of the business aspect, all the ingredients are there, and it would rank right up to the top. Okay. Uh, my background is having been worked in government for 31 years before becoming the county board chair, uh -huh. not in the nursing home industry, but do you think government can really compete in the nursing home business? I, I really believe they can if they understand it as a business. You're delivering a service, but you're delivering it in the concept of a business. And you have to think 
like the business world, uh, you know, like the rest of the business world does. Um, take advantage of the opportunities that are presented. Look at progressive movements, taking the chance. There's a little bit of risk taking there that has to happen. Um, but if you have a solid plan uh, and you believe in it, there's absolutely no reason why Sheboygan County couldn't compete with anybody. Yeah, I'm very pleased to hear that. Yeah. Uh, are there any things that you, areas that you can think of where Rocky Knoll compares favorably or unfavorably with our competition in the area? Um, well, the, the biggest thing in terms of you know, favorably comparing, you're looking again at the physical plant and setting, um, just the uh, amenities that that complex has um, offer us options and business opportunities that our competitors clearly don't have uh, with the cookie cutter style. Uh, centers that a lot of these are. Um, the Woodlands addition is clearly a step above, I believe, most anything. Now, I'm not familiar with every center yet in town, but of the ones I've seen, clearly head and shoulders above there. The, uh, the stability of the workforce uh, is obviously a clearly a plus. Um, on the downside a little bit, costs have been a little high due to the nature of, um, uh, of the organization and the way it was structured. But I think um, there are opportunities without um, um, doing anything drastic that bring them in line. Part of them is the economies of scale too. As you build the business, the costs that we currently have can be supported the way they, they normally would have been anyway. Uh, marketing seems to be key as we've talked. What should the first steps be in marketing the facility that we have? Um, the first steps I think, uh, you know, we're already trying to take there. Those are the quiet ones you don't hear much about. And that is putting together the organization and the product you're going to be marketing. So we are quietly working on the woodland area, making minor little modifications um, for ease of operation there. Uh, also putting together the staff skill and expertises that we will need. Um, to uh, deal with it, the admission process, which is more the paperwork end of the process, but it's also the part that will drive the reimbursement in the long run if it's done right. So we've been working with that for the last two weeks. Uh, I uh, put together a committee that has gone through the process. We're working with the IT department in automating that process to allow us to move the, the residents in and out. Um, as, as quickly as uh, they possibly would like to come. Um, so uh, the uh, next step is then to put together the collateral material, the advertising and that, the theme that we will be working off of. And we've got a little contest going now mm -hmm. at the center to develop a theme uh, that would uh, focus on Rocky Knoll and try to take you know, that 80-year uh, history of quality and uh, utilize that. How will all these changes benefit the community in general? Um, I think two major ways it will do it, um, and possibly a third, depending on how you'd like to split it out. The two major ones, number one, it will give the community and the, and the residents of, of Sheboygan County um, a, a high-class, quality uh, health care uh, facility to service the elderly population uh, in the community. Uh, and to be able to deal with all aspects of their care from all levels. Uh, secondly, um, the tax burden that the county currently is experiencing in, um, I hope to um, significantly reduce the current tax levy uh, that is assigned to Rocky Knoll uh, over the next uh, two years. Um, so uh, that, that tax benefit would be you know, a clear impact uh, on the county taxpayers. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you're on board with us. Thanks. And that question is a good segue to what I anticipate some viewers might be thinking about. Well, why stay in the business at all? You know, we're, we, we've made it clear we want to, we're going to, we're going to do everything we can to be more effective and reduce the pressure on the property to taxpayer, yet provide a good service. But we've gone from three facilities to two. Uh, most of our viewers, I think, may recall that when we uh, sold comprehensive and put an addition on Rocky Knoll was because we had a very old antiquated facility. Sure. Codes had changed, standards have changed. We, we needed to make those adjustments. 
having two facilities such as Sunny Ridge and Rocky Knoll, we couldn't, we couldn't afford it. Our, mm -hmm. our, our scope and, and breadth of, of responsibility was too great and we just simply couldn't afford it. But now we're down to one. Mm -hmm. And what would you say to our viewers, why is it important for Sheboygan County to maintain a nursing home? Well, I think that um, the county has an obligation to deliver uh, care to all of its residents um, and to provide the type of resources to the community that the private sector isn't willing to get into valve in. And that would be your more uh, acute uh, individuals, your more chronic individuals. Um, the private sector is really in it, you know, strictly for the money. Uh, while they want to deliver a quality care, and I'm not trying to suggest to anybody they don't, um, it is a bottom line operation. It is a business uh, for them, uh, and they'll run it that way. I think with, uh, with what we can do at Rocky Knoll, with the, uh, just the tremendous tools that we have available to us, if we can uh, reduce or possibly even someday eliminate the tax levy by operating it the way it needs to be operated um, and competing the way we need to compete, it will also be able to continue to reduce or hold costs or check costs in line in these other areas in dealing with the chronic uh, or um, severe uh, mental disorder uh, uh, diagnoses that are currently having to be placed elsewhere uh, at much greater cost to the county as a whole. So you know, I'm looking at direct and indirect effects uh, as we go forward and I, I see nothing but potential positives for the county. Let me ask you a loaded question, especially <laughs> with my boss sitting next to me here. Okay. <laughs> um, there has been just tremendous change in the healthcare industry and mm -hmm. policy changes at the federal level, at the state level. Uh, movement for uh, people to reside more at, at their homes or not in traditional nursing homes. Sure. So, so there's just been tremendous change the last five years that not only Sheboygan County has experienced but nationally. Yep. And as you mentioned earlier, the private sector needs to be able to respond quickly and adapt and be thinking you know, to where the puck's going to be essentially. Uh, what is it that the county board can do, needs to do, to help you and your team be successful? I, I, it's a great question um, because it's, it's a really, a, it's in a very important issue that, that plays into my thought process as I move forward. Uh, again, coming from the private sector, you're used to being able to sit, sit around a conference table, have a frank and open discussion, and then you walk out with a decision and you move forward. Um, and it's a dynamic process. And I think the, the going forward, uh, what I hope to develop with the county board and, and the oversight committees is that type of dynamic management style where we're not so much just looking at single little line items. We're looking at big picture, looking at plans and investing our energies into where we want to go, not just where we've been in the past. Um, and uh, uh, I, I'm very encouraged by, you know, working with uh, uh, the chairman uh, and uh, the uh, chairman of our oversight committee, uh, Mike Vanderstein. Uh, it's just been, and the rest of the committee members, I've just been uh, very, uh, very excited that I believe that opportunity is there. So uh, the board, uh, uh, as they look at things, if they keep the big picture in mind and the direction that we're going, obviously have the right to demand some success mm -hmm. and some movement. And uh, I believe that if we can show them some of the movement, we can continue to develop that relationship and achieve the goals that we're after. It was nice when we first uh, toured the facility together three weeks ago, your first day on the job, and, and uh, Linda Bear, your director of nursing, took mm -hmm. us around. and. I was so pleased with how you interacted with staff and just went out of your way. If they didn't come to you to say hello, you went to them to say hello. And I, I know you're, you're out there mm -hmm. and uh, getting to know your staff. And, and as you said earlier, it's only been a few weeks. But I sense as well that that cloud of uncertainty and anxiety has, has begun to move out and that there's more optimism. And I'm, 
I wanted to hear from you directly. You know, what are you sensing? Is, is morale improving? Do you, do you th feel things are turning in the organization? I think it is. It's, it's obviously very early, but I'm really not going to let anything stand still. So I still chase people down the hall to say hi to them <laughs> and that. And I think I'm being successful because now I get phone calls and messages left on my phone saying, hi, my name is such and such. You've met all the other ones, but I <laughs> haven't met you yet. And um, uh, I get the message and I go up to the floor and hunt them down and go right back into the med room or wherever they may be and, and say hi. And um, sometimes I'll stand behind them for a minute as they're having a conversation and the person uh, uh, who they're talking to is going, you know, one of those <laughs> things. Um, but I think that there, there is some optimism starting to show there. And the, but the big question is, you know, we've kind of heard it before, maybe not your message, but it's just never materialized. Is, is it really going to work? And so it's really a situation where I have to produce for them. Yeah. Once I think that starts to happen, I, I don't think there will be any stopping it. Well, we only have two minutes left, and again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm so optimistic about the future. I'm pleased with the job that uh, uh, Sunny Ridge has done with, with their operator, and, and I'm particularly pleased with how things have sorted out for staff. We had a number of staff who either transitioned to Rocky Knoll or had to get take a different change and shift, and that, that's hard on people. And a number of those folks I've since talked to, and they're very happy at Rocky Knoll, or they've made that adjustment at Sunny Ridge, and though I'm certain there, there are folks who still have concerns, but generally speaking, it's been a lot of positive feedback. <laughs> Um, how do you, and, and again, we only have a minute remaining, but how do you envision Rocky Knoll looking five years from now? I think it will be the centerpiece of a community-based healthcare uh, organization, uh, where you're going to see uh, it playing a vital part in uh, you know, adult daycare programming, community support programming, uh, working with health and human services. Um, it, it, it will just be part of that overall delivery uh, system that the county will have for its residents. Fantastic. Well, Mike, thank you so much for sure. being our guest today. Uh, that 30 minutes flew by very quickly, and these chairs are still very comfortable. I'm, I'm certain we can continue the discussion. And we'll certainly have Mr. Tobenheim back again in the future to give us a status report next month. Our guest will be Finance Director Tim Finch. We're in the meat of the budget process right now. The County Board will be adopting that budget uh, first week in November. The state is yet to adopt their budget, so there are a lot of things in play, but a lot of good work being done by department heads and others to pull that together. So look forward to giving you a status report on that. And again, on behalf of Chairman Gehring, the full County Board, and, and thank you, Mike Tobenheim. Thank you for joining us. See you next month.